two, one. Okay, welcome to videotape about bladder scanning. It's something that you're commonly gonna do um, as a nurse in our emergency room department. Of the most common reason we're doing is for actually looking at the bladder volume. For example, if you're doing a post void residual. But you, uh, there may be some other indications as well. So let's just talk about the machine in general. This is one of our two ultrasound machines we have in the department, but in the future, you may be looking at a different kind of machine. These are made by Sonosite. This is our laptop model called the Edge. We have another larger model called the Export K. Um, but they're both basically the same, though you do your calculations slightly differently. Both of them have three different probes. And as you start doing more ultrasounding as nurses in our department, you'll be dealing with three main probes. There's two low frequency probes, which can see really deep, um, uh, but they have very poor resolution. But they're still a very important probes that you'll use most of the time. And so this is your curvilinear probe, your phase array probe. And then also you'll be using the high frequency probe right here. This is a neat little probe. It doesn't see very deep, only about four centimeters, but get exquisite detail. So you use this for vascular access. Any kind of probe used for vascular access on any machine is a very high frequency probe. Today, since we're talking about bladder scanning, we're going to skip, stick with a low frequency probe and, um, um, and we're going to be using the curvilinear because that gives us the broadest view, which is what we want. After turning on the machine, you'll pick the probe on this machine by just pushing a button um, that's associated with the probe. So for example, we have these color coded. So this probe goes right here and we have a color coded blue. Um, this probe color coded sort of a, a pukey yellow and that will go to this pukey little uh, thing right here. And you just push the button right here and that will help you select the probe. When the probe goes on the patient for bladder scanning, it's going to go right at the base of his abdomen, right above the pubis symphysis. All right? So if you're too high, you're not going to see anything. If you're off to the right, you're not going to see much of anything. Off to the left, you're not going to see much of anything, but you get right in the middle so the probe is in a, is in a transverse position um, with a probe marker, this little thing, off to the patient's right, your left, you're going to see this big rectangular structure and that's his bladder which is very full right now. You'll fan the probe which means going sideways with the probe this way so if you can show the probe coming down that way that's called fanning, fanning. So in this situation where you see the bottom of his bladder the top of his bladder and what you want to do is get a picture of the bladder right when it's in this mid position which has the widest and the deepest measurements and that's going to give you the most accurate measurements here. Now if you notice the bladder it's not round it's more rectangular and that's normal. Um, you, in, you may get in there you may see something that doesn't look like a bladder. If you'll get in there and you won't see anything which may mean you're either in the wrong position or the bladder is just empty. Or you may get in there and you say, may see, say, a round structure that's not really rectangular. Well, that you might be looking at an ovarian cyst. You might be looking at a urachal remnant on a, on a, a menstruating female. It might be a metametricopal, so maybe blood trapped up in a uterus by a congenital anomaly. So if it doesn't look like a bladder, ask somebody to take a look at it to make sure you're actually seeing the bladder. In this situation, we're going to get the rightest view of it and we want to get the measurement just for the bladder volume calculation. So we're going to freeze the widest measurement right like that. Just push freeze. And now we don't have to touch the probe for a while. And we want to start getting the measurements for calculation. So we're going to push a button which is conveniently labeled calc right here. And we're going to push that and it's going to give us a bunch of different options. It's going to give us D1 which is uh, the first dimension, D2 the second dimension, and D3 the third dimension. If, there, um, if it's checked, it means there's already a measurement in there, but we're just going to change the measurement, so it doesn't matter. You don't have to clear everything out. So once we have it on D1, now we're going to push the caliper button so we can measure it. You're going to use the trackpad to move the cursor um, to one side, and then you're going to um, um, push select, and that's going to allow you to move the second cursor to the other side. So you're getting the, the widest dimension that you can. And once you have that, it says here that's 7.29 centimeters, you're going to save it by pushing a button that's conveniently labeled Save Calc. Boom. Just like that. All right. That's saved as your, as your first dimension. 
Then you're going to take your trackpad and you're going to move the cursor down to D2. And now you're going to measure that. By pushing calipers again, it's going to give you a second caliper. Measure from the top of the bladder, that means closest to the abdomen, to the deepest parts of the bladder. Push select for that. Move that second cursor down to the deepest part of the bladder right here. Okay. And then you're going to um, you're going to uh, give you this measurement for D2. And the way you're going to save this is by um, putting save calc. That's measuring that dimension. But now we need to get the height of the bladder because the way you measure the dimensions of the bladder is by doing height times the width times the depth. And since it's a weird shaped bladder, they just estimate what the coefficient is to, to multiply that by. So in this case, it's height times width times depth. This machine probably uses a coefficient of 0.7. That gets you your measurement. But you don't have to think about it because it does it for you. So since we have those dimensions, let's unfreeze this and let's get our, our third dimension. Now we're going to take the probe and we're going to get a sagittal view where we're going to put it here again. If we're too high, we're not going to see anything. If we're too low, we're not really going to see anything. We're going to get it. So rock the probe. So that's right in the middle. And now we're getting the fullest dimension of the bladder we can. Now his bladder is getting so full while we're doing this, it doesn't even fit into our whole screen here, but it's close enough. We're going to freeze that image. We're going to go back and get our calcs. Scroll now down to the third dimension. Okay. Take our calipers, measure the height of the bladder. So it's going to be from here over on our far right. Select that. Go here on our far left, right there. That's So now that's going to be the height of the bladder from down here all the way up to here. And that gives us a measurement 9.74 centimeters. And we're going to save that calc. And what it's going to do is going to multiply D1 times D2 times D3 by whatever, whatever coefficient this machine decides it wants to use. And it's going to give us a bladder volume of 219 cubic centimeters or 219 mLs. So he's got, whew, poor thing, you have seven and a half ounces of fluid in your bladder now. And, uh, and that's how we do it. There are a few ways that you can easily go wrong. The first thing, the first way you can go wrong is by picking the wrong probe. If you pick, pick, get the wrong probe, you're not going to get the full view you want. The second way you can go wrong is um, when you put it on him, is by not moving enough gel and it might look really fuzzy. So you might want to put a little bit more gel on there. Third way you can go wrong is by measuring the wrong part of the bladder. You may be too low and so it looks bladder looks really small or too high so the bladder looks really small. So you want to get it right here where you get your maximum dimensions. And then, um, then you'll take it off. You'll try to do your calcs but there's no more image anymore because you forgot to freeze it. So go back and freeze it. Almost everybody does that at some point. Freeze it, and then get your dimensions by pushing calcs, picking whatever dimension you want to get, calipers, measuring the um, measuring whatever that dimension is, saving that calculation, and do that in all three dimensions. You can't go wrong. All right.